the feminine principle in Buddhism is really the great mother, Prajnaparamita, which is pure potential. It's equivalent to the Dharmakaya. It's like pregnant with all phenomena, yet nothing in itself. So it's the ground of being. And so that means that it's permeating everything. It is imbuing everything, and yet it's nothing in itself. So the, the, the feminine principle is that. It's, it's Yum Chemo in Tibetan, Prajnaparamita, Sanskrit. And so if it's the ground of being, then it is the ground of being itself. But that, that ground of being needs to be recognized. And so in the Yabhyam image of Samantabhadra and Samantabhadri, Yabhyam meaning the male and female in union, Samantabhadri is the ground, the, the, the Dharmakaya, the open, pure potential of awareness that, pure, that permeates everything. And Samantabhadra, the masculine, is the consciousness that recognizes that. So when you see them in union, it's the ground and the recognition of the ground. So it means the, the return to non-duality from the basic split into duality. Well, the feminine, the feminine principle in Buddhism, the way it's understood in Buddhism is not something that's known in our culture and it's not something that's taught. It's not that it's not present, it's not that, you know, it only <laughs> lives in Asia, but it hasn't been really taught in our culture and, and to a large extent it's not taught by Buddhist teachers either. And so I think the value of, of a conference like Wisdom Rising is to, to look at that. Well, what is it and what, what's here for us? And then in the West, you know, if we, we grow up, you know, uh, men and women, um, you know, what do you even learn about this? Is it even discussed? Is, I mean, did you ever hear about feminine principle when you were growing up or the sacred feminine? Uh, maybe, maybe, but maybe not also. It's quite possible not. And so for me, this is really important because the world is out of balance. The world is out of balance um, in many ways because it's dominated by the masculine. And the, the masculine has, ha, in all cultures where the masculine dominates, there's, there's a, um, a tendency to, uh, for the dominator model of society rather than a partnership model. and. Um, and so that's gotten us into the ecological situation that we're in right now and into um, our political situations and so on. So what would it be like if there was balance? And not only, you know, like um, women in power, um, you know, like a woman president or something like that, because just because there's a woman president doesn't mean that woman is male, is female identified and actually knows what that is in herself either. Um, she may be, just be like, I'm just as good as a man, rather than I actually have something different to offer. So, so our world is out of balance. And if, if we can educate ourselves and if women can come to know that within themselves and then and then teach it and embody it, then gradually the world will come more into balance. That experience of embodiment has to do with really actually experiencing your own body as sacred and as a as an expression of enlightenment rather than as an obstacle to enlightenment. The body itself is the mandala. Um, sexuality is sacred. It's not 
it's not something that um, we need to overcome. It's something that we need to experience fully and, and experience as path. And so there's that aspect of the feminine embodiment. I think also the feminine is an intuitive knowing, uh, an intuitive um, way of moving uh, in the sense of not necessarily in a linear way, in a, in a spiral, a spiral way of thinking, of being. And that space allows for creativity, it, it allows for synchronicity to occur. It, it allows space for all kinds of things to happen that, that can't happen when everything is sort of cut and dry. Uh, 